You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the news for this episode. Starting off over at Hot Hardware, I ran across this uh, article that I thought was pretty cool. Logitech is adding a Linux-compatible option to their product site. And uh, this is pretty neat because a lot of Logitech mice use a proprietary Logitech USB dongle thing, and it would be great if there was official support for that in Linux. And so Logitech is... is uh, adding some management functionalities, uh, particularly with Steam game games uh, for some key pieces of Linux, or uh, sorry, Logitech hardware. All these L's are getting me messed up. So you should be able to uh, start seeing that um, and, and start seeing drivers for Logitech mice and management software to manage your Logitech input devices, particularly when it comes to games under Linux. So pretty neat. From the register in their servers section, IBM to push Linux apps on Power Iron in China than elsewhere. IBM is opening a Power Systems Linux center in Beijing, China, in the hopes of getting more local ISVs interested in its Power Systems Iron and luring them away from x86-based systems. With the Power Systems business taking it on the chin in IBM's first quarter, revenues fell 32% compared to a year ago. You can bet that Big Blue is trying to light a fire under its Linux on power efforts. So pretty interesting. I'm curious to see how well this will go, you know, over time. Obviously, you know, the buying cycle of a lot of businesses is years. So, you know, IBM has to kind of get their foot in the door and get that attention, you know, and a sale won't really materialize until, you know, a fair amount of time later. But still, it looks like they're making the effort. In Wired.com, uh, Linux world embraces Google Chromebooks. This is pretty neat. The latest incarnation of the Linux kernel was released this past week, and for the first time, it includes code for running Linux on Google Chromebooks. Chromebooks come loaded with uh, Chrome OS, a web-happy Linux-based operating system designed by Google. Sorry, my allergies are going absolutely nuts here. Uh, but the new kernel code will make it easier to run other versions of the popular open source operating system on these machines. So pretty cool. Um, definitely check that out. From iprogrammer.info, Arduino Young brings Wi-Fi. The Arduino Young Yun has been unveiled as the first of a family of Wi-Fi products that combine Arduino with Linux by using a system on a trip chip running Lenino, a customized version of OpenWRT. This has huge implications. According to the Arduino blog, which reported the new board minutes after Massimo Banzi announced it in San Francisco at the Bay Area Maker Fair, in Chinese, Yun means cloud, and the purpose of this board will, is to make it simple to connect to complex web ser services directly from Arduino. That's right. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, I'm curious to see how well this is going to turn out. Um, this opens up a whole host of options, so pretty neat. From Ars Technica and their Technology Information Technology Lab, Linux Mint 15 brings a prettier desktop, new software, and driver managers. The Linux Mint project has unveiled version 15 of the increasingly popular desktop operating system with upgrades to the Mate and Cinnamon desktop environments as well as new applications for managing software and drivers. Codenamed Olivia, Linux Mint 15 is based on the most recent version of Ubuntu and will be supported until January 2014. So it's uh, currently in the release candidate stage. A final release is coming later. 
Um, you know, we all know Linux Mint is based off of Debian. Debian is one of my favorite uh, distributions, particularly as a base distribution. Uh, so pretty cool. Definitely check it out. From techradar.computing, watch and record live TV on your Raspberry Pi. I ran across this. Uh, it's a tutorial uh, to get XBMC and TV head end running on the Raspberry Pi. Apparently, it's a really great combination. So if this is something you want to do, check this out. I wanted to uh, point everybody to this. You know, As always, everything we've talked about is in the show notes. So if you want the link to this, just visit us online, quicksurf.com. And in the show notes for this episode, uh, you'll see a link to uh, go get that. Um, definitely check that out. From tech2.in.com, Google shows developers how to hack Google Glass and run Ubuntu. That's right. Google has shown attendees of its Google I.O. event how one can go about running another operating system, namely Ubuntu, on their Google Glass. The company showcased the project, the process during a session named Voiding Your Warranty. And this does, in fact, void your warranty. So, you know, don't do necessarily do this unless you really feel the need to. Um, so anyway, pretty interesting. Definitely check it out. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can visit us online over at quicksurf.com. And uh, I'll see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.